たろう。俺が負けたら敗下になろう。その代わり、俺が勝ったら。陛下をいただく。Wow, talk about coming on strong for another week of Overlord. Last week, we definitely had some really hype buildup, and over the last week, we've been wondering what's going to happen with Ainz making his appearance inside of the Colosseum and Jurgniv just basically just flipping his crap. Well, this episode, we got to see everything that led up to Ainz making his way into the Colosseum, and we got to see a ton more. But before we really get into the episode, the one thing that I definitely wanted to come on the camera today and ask you guys is do you watch the OP? I've been finding, like, much more lately, and this hasn't always been the case, that、uh, one of my guilty pleasures is watching the OP. And a lot of it is to really get a lot of insight on what's going to end up coming、uh, to fruition as the anime kind of, like, you know,、uh, is, is, is airing and as it comes out. And also, To see on what kind of music plays. Now, one of the things that I definitely noted while listening to Overlord is the music is dope AF. It's a bop. But there was also a lot of、uh, things that I wanted to call out that are featured. And two of the things that I noted were A, Bunny Girls. I mean, who doesn't love Bunny Girls, right? You know, you got you to get, you get your inner,、uh, you know, your inner Rudy. Uh, your, your rudiest gray rat, and you have to love bunny girls. And then the second thing that I, I noted was the dragon kingdom, which we have only seen a little bit through that one dragon in the dungeon.、Um, I forget what, what his name is, but he was like a, a blue, blue eyes, white dragon type dragon.、Um, I think he's important.、Uh, we've only ever seen the, the dragon kingdom really in that, in that sense. We haven't really learned more of the dragon kingdom outside of what Jerk Neef has told us so far, which is that he hates the dragon kingdom because. Because the queen there is old AF, but she uses magic to make her appearance of that of a young woman. So that's all we know so far. So I'm excited to see the Dragon Kingdom come,、uh, you know, be brought to light and, and learn more about the Dragon Kingdom kind of as the, as the、uh, season kind of rolls out. That's one of the things that I'm definitely really interested in is kind of seeing more of the Dragon Kingdom. Because、uh, that's really all we've gotten so far.、Uh, so, then now let's talk about the episode. So, the episode is really, it really kind of goes into this in this,、uh, this kind of order here that, that I kind of denoted. So, it kind of went in this order. So, we, we get backstory of what led Ainz all the way to the Empire,、uh, all the way to the Baharut Empire, and what, what led him to what, what transpired last week during the episode where he made his appearance in the Colosseum. We get to see him meet with Fluter. Uh, you know, a fluter paradigm, you know, whatever before there. We get to see him meet with the,、uh, the handler or the promoter that kind of handles the Colosseum stuff. We got to see the bunny girl. Yay!、Uh, then, then we kind of got to see his conversation、uh, a little bit with the troll, which is the warrior king. And then we got to see him basically, you know, overpower and take him down. Those are kind of the. The things that occurred this episode. Then we got to see Jerk Neve at the end of the episode、uh, plead for his life and his kingdom, where he basically asked to become a vassal state, which is like a, a subsidiary essentially of the、uh, sorcerer kingdom、uh, that has some, I guess, some, some leniency、uh, on it. But because Ainz didn't fully grasp or understand the request of being a vassal state, he didn't. He didn't Immediately accept. He said, put it in writing, get it to me, which immediately th threw Jerk Neve off because Jerk Neve was like, oh, we, this request must have thrown off what his plans were for my nation, which isn't the case at all. It's just because Ainz had no idea what the F he meant. So I really love that quite a bit. So that's kind of how we ended off the episode, kind of going into next week. So we're going to see more of Jerk Neve just freaking out, losing more hair, losing more sleep as he tries to.、Uh, Put a request in to be a vassal state that is heavily in Ainz's and Sorcerer Kingdom's benefit versus his empire, so he can maintain the empire's stature essentially. He's going to do everything that he can. We know that that's coming. So let's kind of talk through the episode. So the, the, the first thing is, I really like how,、um, how the, the, the head of the guild was really being able to voice himself with Ainz, and Ainz really made it known.、Um, That, you know, please keep giving me feedback. Please tell me on the things that I can do or cannot do or shouldn't be doing or should be doing.、Uh, and because of the negative feedback that the guild,、uh, the, the head of the guild gave him, he actually really thought that that was refreshing because everybody under his、uh, 
basically everybody under his kingdom right now, you know, whether it is Albedo or Demiurge or whatever, because there's they're not afraid necessarily, but they they have sworn allegiance to him like wholeheartedly. They will not undermine anything he says. So he really loved that that the guild uh, that the head of the guild was uh, negative or provided him constructive feedback because he doesn't really get that often. So he, he's you know the the head of the guild has already kind of like solidified himself as somebody very important. Then we move on to the the fluter stuff, which I thought the flu the the fluter paradigm stuff was just absolutely hilarious. One of the things that I, I noted as well is I love how uh, old age kind of makes you funny because he's like f it, I don't give a crap about this kingdom anymore. Uh, I just want to learn more about magic. And Eins ends up throwing him a book that has all about uh, like death and and how to like utilize souls and a bunch of other things. And I love how Eins gave him a book in English. And uh, Fluter couldn't read it. He's like, I don't know what the F this means. So he gave him an eyeglass. And the eyeglass allows uh, transcription or allows um, the ability to to read other languages, right? It, it allows that... Um, I can't think of the word right now, but it allows that uh, translation. So it allows translation. But the funny shit was that Eins was like, I'm going to need that back. That's the only one I got. And he flew there's like, no, oh, my master, I needed to read. And I like how Eins flipped it on him. He's like, true knowledge is when you can decipher it yourself. And I was like, bro, you just gave this dude an English textbook, which does this language doesn't exist in this world at all. So I was like, I, I found that hella funny. Then we got to then we got to see Ains talk to the promoter. The promoter uh, was able to enlighten him and us that there are certain runes that Ains thought didn't exist in this world that do exist, but it, it exists via the uh, not the trolls. It exists via the um, what are those people called? Uh, the dwarf in the dwarfing kingdom. Which makes sense, you know, based on actual historical uh, well Histor historical fiction, uh, it makes sense that they, they would be, you know, uh, tied into runes and stuff like that. So we find out that we get to see the Bunny Girl, which apparently she comes from the Far East. Bunny Girl, hella creepy. She got creepy-ass hands, uh, but I love the Bunny stuff. Then we got to see uh, Ainz go in and take on the 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 warrior the the warrior king. He ends up being a troll, which Ainz has familiarity with. And there's some keynotes here. Uh, I like how Ainz was talking to him. He's like, "I am the overlord of death." I was like, "Damn, Ainz, get it." Uh, then the warrior king was like, "Yo, if I win, I get to eat you." <laughs> and Ainz was like, "If I win, you get to be my subordinate." But the the fact that he was saying, "If I could, I'll, I'll eat you," I was like, "Oh my gosh." Uh, and, the, and then the whole time during the battle, Jerkneef was, like, losing his freaking mind. He was like, come on, Warrior King, get a Warrior King. And I just kept looking at him, like, yo, you're so annoying, bro, shut up. Uh, but I love, I just love all of that. So, really great episode. Uh, Ainz has now gained a new subordinate in the Warrior King because he revived him. Uh, I like how Jerkneef is shaking in his boots because he thinks Ainz is this, over, like, he is the overlord, but he thinks, like, he's like this, like, like, he's thinking 12 50 steps ahead, but that's really not the case. Uh, and I love all the different little nuances. I like seeing Bunny Girls. I like seeing uh, Fluter a little bit more and like what he's doing. Uh, and I like being able to kind of uh, just see on what's to come with the OP. So let me know what you guys thought of this episode down in the comments below. As always, I appreciate you guys being here for another week of Overlord. Uh, and I will see you guys next week as we transition into what's to come with Jerkneef being a vassal state. And I'm guessing that next week we'll transition back to Albedo and Philip uh, and everything that's happening in the Riestes kingdom. Uh, next week. At least that's my guess is that we'll probably swap back. If not, we'll get one more episode of this uh, of the Baharuth Empire stuff and then we'll transition back. But I'm going to see you guys next week. Peace out.